Hi, this is Kylie Koo. Welcome to my studio. Our April Week 3 prompt in the Mixed Media Emporium Facebook group is Let's Get Arty. In my video last week I made these collage papers and I did a second video making collage papers but on the gel plate. So I'm going to use my or some of my collage papers today in a mixed media piece and I'm going to do a mixed media face. So I'm going to use my Fabriano art journal. I've been asked a few times if I would do more faces so that's why I'm doing this today. So I'm going to start by using some of this Dela Rowney FW acrylic ink in red earth and in a moment I will add uh, a second colour which is raw sienna. Then all I'm going to do after that is to take some water in my spray bottle, spray it, take a large dry paintbrush and just start to spread it out a bit. Now most of the video will be at double speed but I am putting some of it at four times speed just because there, there is a lot of film to get through and I do want you to see really my full process at least as much as possible but I will take out anything that is a bit repetitive. Once that's done I dry it with the heat tool and then what I do is to go through my collage pieces and start to pull out just a few pieces. I am looking through them, seeing the ones that kind of call to me today but really I could have pulled any from the pile here. So some are tissue paper, some are on old book pages and some are other recycled pages. So just anything that calls me. I'm not putting down whole pieces, I'm just tearing off bits of these here and there. And then what I'll do is I'll use some gel matte medium to glue them into place. The reason I don't use a glue stick to glue them down is because I will be applying more wet medium over the top and given the amount that I'm, I know that I'm likely to apply I just feel that a glue stick wouldn't hold up to this. So I'm just kind of placing these randomly uh, I want some to touch each other, you know, to kind of cross over so that they don't all look as if they're just kind of dotted around here and there. So some were the ones that I did the first week and the others were on the gel plate that I did midweek. And I will leave a link to both of those videos above and indeed in the description box below. And of course I will also leave a link to the Mixed Media Emporium Facebook group below. And if you would like to join us in that group we'd be very happy to see you there. Just be sure to answer the four questions which includes agreeing to the group rules and uh, you know if you've done that then we look forward to seeing you in the group. So just getting these all down and into place. So I'll just jump forward a little bit here. I liked that little bit of the kind of turquoise teal colour there. So I decided to take this other acrylic ink. This is a pearlescent ink and it's waterfall green and it's a really beautiful colour. I really like this and all I'm going to do is to dot it about the kind of top of the page and again I'm going to spray it with my water bottle just to get it to run a little bit but I will also dab it out a bit because it's a kind of pearlescent it sits quite thick where the uh, drop of ink has actually landed. So I'm looking at my page, I'm going to use this graphite stick and I'm going to sketch out a face on my page. But what I want to do before that is just show you very quickly the basic principles of drawing faces. You can start in different ways but basically you have your kind of oval shape for your head. If you draw a horizontal line across the middle of your head, that's where the eyes will sit, Divide that bottom bit into half again, that's where the nose will roughly sit and divide that bottom portion in half again and that's where the mouth will sit. Now the eyes, if you imagine a third eye in the middle, your eyes, you know, those three would be roughly the same size. So 
If you were doing whimsical, sometimes you'll see the eyes much further apart. The nose, as I say, sits on that line, the middle of the mouth on the next line, and I like to put in a little bit of chin. You can then start to put in the top of the eyelid and the eye brows above that. The ears, I've probably got them a little bit high here, but usually about halfway down the eye to the lower point of the eye, down to round about the mouth. And uh, of course you have your, your iris, your pupils, etc. Now, a lot of people draw very thin necks and that's fine. You know, faces can be very stylized, And the face that you'll see me doing today is very stylized. The hair, you know, will normally sit a little bit above the top of the head. And of course, depending on the hairstyle, it may come forward and onto the forehead. And the neck, as I say, a lot of people tend to draw them quite thin. Uh, it is just one way of doing it. I tend to draw mine a little bit broader than that. So those are the kind of basic principles. But you can start in a different place just by, for example, drawing the eyes or the nose. I will often start by drawing the eyes. Obviously, you can add character depending on the way that you put the eyebrows. A good thing to, to look at to check expressions is actually cartoon characters. And what I'm showing there is you know, if the light is coming full on, you'll have areas where the light will naturally hit. And I'll try and talk you through that in more detail with the one I'm going to do on my page here. Now, the graphite stick doesn't show up very well, but I will leave it. And again, I'll go back to a bit faster on this bit now. So that piece of collage with the black blob on it basically led me to place an eye there. And there was almost a mark left by where some of the ink had dried, where I thought that looks like that could be the other eye there. So I started with the eyes for this. You will see as I go along, I kind of adjust things a little bit, but today on this face, I am working very intuitively. So this is very much a stylized face. I'm not looking to necessarily create what I might call in air quotes, a pretty face. It's just something that, you know, what will emerge will emerge kind of thing. So I've got here some PBO uh, titanium white paint. Just going to mix it with a little bit of water. I don't want it too thick and I'm just using the palette knife to kind of block in the face just with a bit lighter colour. And you'll see I go to use my fingers, my hands as well. And this is just to start so that I can actually see what I'm working with. I take a little bit of that off because I want some of the collage to hopefully show through by the end. So I'm going back to the inks that I used. I'm just going to use this from time to time to add a little bit of colour. But as I say, this will be very stylized, as you may have seen from the thumbnail, and certainly by the time you get to the end, you'll see how stylized it is. I'm now going to take some PBO in Mars Black, and I'm basically just going to use that to put the features in. And you'll see at some point later on, I actually, I think I adjust the nose a bit. I think the thing about this type of painting is that it doesn't actually matter if everything is in the right place. I am not trying to make this perfect in any way. In fact, I couldn't make it perfect. Now, one of the tips I want to give you is, you know, if you, you I think in some ways you've got to feel confident doing a face. Uh, even if you think you can't draw faces, you know, I am no expert in faces, but I think if you just approach it with the confidence of you're going to get something down, then it makes it easier. One thing I sometimes do is if I'm having a bit of trouble about how to place things, then I will just go and look in the mirror. It might sound strange, you know, nothing that I 
no faces that I do actually look like me, but sometimes I'll just look in the mirror, you know, so if I think, how, where does the nose actually sit in relation to this, or how do the eyes look, then look in the mirror, and it does give you a bit of a guide. So, you know, I'm using the inks here, I'm using the paints here, using the different media, they're all wet on there, so they are going to mix in, but this is just about starting to add layers of interest. As I say, I've added the, the collage. I'm not too concerned if it all gets blocked out. I do hope that some of it will show through at the end. Uh, but there's something about it adding texture, adding interest underneath. So, of course, one of the things I will want to start to do is to bring some light and shade to the face. You'll see there that I'm kind of scrubbing out the nose. I wasn't entirely happy with that. And sometimes the, the kind of faces I do in this sort of style, in, in many ways they turn out to be quite androgynous looking. So I've now got a Pabio paint in Naples Yellow Hue and this is a Hobbycraft paint in Turquoise. I'm also going to throw into the mix this Reeves paint in Lime Yellow. I will often add a bit of turquoise to faces, especially to kind of mixed media faces like this. I don't know why that is, it's just a colour I like to add and sometimes a little of the green as well. But you'll see that today I take that quite far. So here I am just using my fingers again to apply paint. Again, for me this is just part of my intuitive process. And I'm going to start to add in some areas where there are likely to be shadows, you know, so I'm imagining here that the light is coming straight onto the face, so I will add areas of shadow and highlights as well. I liked that that first piece of collage paper that had the blob on it that became an eye, I, I quite liked it that that was quite dark, so I decide that I'm not going to make it entirely the same as the other eye. Here I draw in ears, I think I actually end up putting them at different heights, that's okay. You know, as I say, this is stylized. it's... Uh, it does look like a face, but it's not uh, a standard sort of portrait. Also starting to add in a bit more colour around the back here, just filling in some of those white gaps. And again, I just keep working back and forward on the face, sometimes adding, there's some of the highlights going in, you know, so recognising 
where the light will be hitting, which is normally the parts of the face that stick out that bit more. So the forehead, the bridge of the nose, the tip of the nose, the cheeks, and uh, sometimes the lips, making it a bit darker under the chin because again there'll be a bit of shadow cast by the chin. So now I've got this Reeves, it's called Flesh, this colour. It's quite a kind of mm, almost a pink colour and I just wanted to introduce a little bit of this where I feel that I needed a bit of pink and of course you'll see me from time to time actually drying off before I add more on. Now I'd mix some of the pink with the white there it's still mixing a little bit with what's on the actual page itself because I don't dry them fully. You'll see that I come back time and again to just kind of add in darker spots. I quite like with a, a lot of the kind of face paintings that I do to make around the eyes quite dark. Uh, I guess that's just one of my styles that, that I like to adopt. And uh, yeah, so it's very much a case of going back and forward. So again, I'm going to leave you with a little bit of music and come back in at any point where I think I have something more to, to offer by way of, I guess, advice on how to approach this if this is something that you want to hear. So at this point I'm thinking I've used a lot of the kind of turquoise greens dark in the face and I'm thinking does the background go with it? Looking back on it and looking at it now I'm thinking that it probably did but I felt that I needed to add some of the kind of turquoise and green to the background. Mm. I maybe should have left it, I'm not sure. Anyway, I'm just using my palette knife to do so. I will also add some white in there. I just felt that it needed something a bit more and something to draw the colours of the face to the background, to link the two together. And you'll see in a moment that I decide that the background is actually too bright. It didn't seem to go with the face. So I'm taking the paintbrush, there's still a little bit of the ink on it from earlier, 
I'm trying to just mute down the turquoise and the green a bit. So just using a bit of water there and seeing, seeing if I can do that. As I say, I then take some white, scrape it on, and then I think immediately after this, I end up using some more of the uh, ink that I used at the very beginning of the process. Let me know what you think. Was it better with the background before or the way it ends up now? I'd, I'd, I'd like to uh, know what you think about that. I keep swapping my mind on it, changing my mind on it. I'm not too sure. Yeah, there, there I add in a bit black just to mute it down completely. It's almost grey actually because it's quite watery and has a bit of white in it. I just felt that the background there was way too bright to go with this character that was emerging. So I'm now drying it and I'm taking these portfolio water soluble oil pastels. These work great on top of acrylic paint and I'm just going to use a few colours. I felt I needed to define uh, the kind of outline a bit more so I'm using this dark, I think it's a blue violet. I'll use some greens, some grey, slate grey and just trying to bring a bit more definition and as I say these are great you have to be careful because they are water soluble and you also have to be careful because your pages can stick together so at some point I'll put a spray fixative on this just to hold these in place so again I just go back and forward you'll see I'm going around the eyes a lot to darken it I bring in a bit more darkness on the face you'll see I also use the grey and then the white just to add in some lighter highlights as well. So again I'll leave you for a few minutes uh, and I'll be back to tell you a bit more.
So I decide I need to add something else to this background. So I'm going back to that uh, pearlized ink. Again, just adding some, I suppose, some drippage. I'm going to take the spray bottle. I'm going to cover the face a bit because I don't want to move the uh, soluble wax pastel at all. So just going to let that drip down a bit. And I, I do feel that this starts to bring the background and the face together. Interesting for me anyway, looking at the face, just looking at it from that different angle. I quite often draw faces quite long when I'm drawing this way. If, if I've got it up on an easel, it's a bit different, but this way I tend to draw them a bit longer. Just saying a bit here about when you're drying, you have to be careful because you can melt the wax. Now, two Liquitex inks here, Muted Turquoise and Muted Green. I just wanted to add them to the background as well. The other thing about using uh, wax pastels is if you go onto the page behind this and you try to heat it, you are in danger of melting the wax on this side as well. I've done that before where I've just forgotten that I've used wax pastels. So what I'll do is I'll put a piece of uh, greaseproof paper, something of that sort, in between these pages until I can fix them. So you can see where there's a bit of resist from the wax pastels there. I didn't want any of this to go on the face, but to be honest, most of it would have probably just not actually stuck onto the face because I had used so much wax on it. So just lifting off the excess there very much a stylized face. I actually like it. Just showing you there where the bits of collage are showing through. It almost to me looks a bit like kind of tattoos of some sort. Now I recognise this will not be everyone's cup of tea and that's perfectly fine. But if you did like it then please do hit the thumbs up and leave me a comment. You'll see from the image at the end that the the thing in reality is actually a bit darker. My studio was very light and bright today. So remember, Nina will also have a video and I will link that below. So thanks ever so much for watching. Do take care. Bye for now.